Welcome everybody to another video of Ancient Greece Reloaded. Today we will talk about the famous queen Clytemnestra, the wife of King Agamemnon. By the way, if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so to stay tuned for upcoming videos. Clytemnestra is the daughter of Leda and Tyndareus and the half-sister of Helen. Clytemnestra and Helen are half-sisters because Zeus appeared to Leda in the form of a swan and slept with her. On the same night, Tyndareus also had sex with Leda and Leda became pregnant. Leda gave birth to four children, or in some versions, laid four eggs. Clytemnestra and Castor were Tyndareus' children and therefore they were mortal. Helen and Polydevkes were Zeus, therefore they were immortal. Clytemnestra's importance in Greek mythology comes from her marriage to Agamemnon, Menelaus' brother. There are two versions of Clytemnestra's involvement in the death of Agamemnon. Homer describes Agamemnon's departure for the Trojan War to help to avenge his brother Menelaus. While Agamemnon is away, Aegisthus plotted to seduce Clytemnestra and murder Agamemnon once he returned from the Trojan War. As the years passed and there was no word that the war was anywhere near an end, Clytemnestra weakened and welcomed the sensuous advances of Aegisthus. When the war does finally end, Agamemnon arrives home to be killed by men hired by Aegisthus. Orestes, Agamemnon's and Clytemnestra's son, kill Aegisthus to avenge his father's death. Clytemnestra disappears or is killed but Homer does not go into too much detail about her. In this version, Clytemnestra is weak and insignificant compared to the male players. A Schilus series of plays called Orestia provide the most popular version of this myth. In the first play, Agamemnon, Aeschylus describes Clytemnestra as a strong woman and not the weakling she appeared to be in Homer's version. When Agamemnon leaves for the Trojan War, Clytemnestra starts her torrid affair with Aegisthus. Together, they plot to kill Agamemnon as soon as he returns from the war. When the signal is given that the war is over, Clytemnestra prepares for the return of Agamemnon. She's already mad at Agamemnon for sacrificing the daughter Iphigenia, and then she finds out that Agamemnon is bringing home another wife, Cassandra. As soon as Agamemnon's chariot pulls up in front of the palace, Clytemnestra goes out to welcome Agamemnon. She lays a purple cloth on the ground for him to walk over. At first Agamemnon refuses to walk over the cloth, but soon gives in to Clytemnestra's request. Cassandra, given the sight of prophecy by Apollo, but with a curse that no one would believe here because she failed to keep her promise to have sex with him, remained outside because she could see the doom surrounding the palace. She realized she was fated to die and resolutely walked onto the palace to receive her death. When Cassandra finally enters the palace, a cry is heard and a blood-drenched Clytemnestra is shown standing over the dead bodies of Agamemnon and Cassandra. Aegisthus marries Clytemnestra to become king, but is no more than a puppet to Clytemnestra. This ends the play Agamemnon. After the murders, Aegisthus replaced Agamemnon as king and ruled for seven years with Clytemnestra as his queen. In some traditions, they have three children, a son, Aletes, and two daughters, Erigone and Helen. Clytemnestra and Aegisthus were eventually killed by Orestes, her son by Agamemnon. The infant Helen was also killed. Aletes and Erigone grew up at Mycenae, but when Aletes comes of age, Orestes returns from Sparta, kills his half-brother and takes the throne. Orestes and Erigone are said to have been married and had a son, Penthilus. Let us finish with the following saying. All speech is vain and empty, unless it be accompanied by action, the Mosthenes. That being said, remember guys to hit the like button and to subscribe to our channel, it would help us a lot. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for upcoming videos.